Yo, what's up guys, Joey here. Welcome back to another full PC build guide. So if you've never built a gaming PC before, you've come to the right place. We're gonna be breaking down this video into four parts. First part, we're gonna go over all their parts and their prices. And then second, we're gonna be jumping right into the building process. I'm gonna be showing you guys how to build this step by step. Third, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to install the Windows 10 operating system, any necessary drivers you may need, and then games. And then last, we're actually gonna be playing all current popular games. So of course, Fortnite. Black Ops 4 just came out, so we'll definitely try that out. Um, PUBG, CSGO, Overwatch, and am I missing one? I think those are it. All right, guys, let's just jump right into it. This is gonna be a pretty long video because it is gonna be a full guide. So the processor we chose to go with, we went with the Ryzen 3 2200G. Now this is a four core, four thread CPU. So the motherboard we're gonna be pairing it with, we went with a B450 chipset board. This is a micro ATX form factor. For the price, it offers a lot of upgrade potential. We have four RAM slots, an NVMe SSD slot, and quite a few USB ports. When you get your motherboard, they always come with SATA cable cables and your IO shield. So moving on to our graphics card, we went with the RX 560. This is the four gigabyte version, not the standard two gigabyte more common version. So this one's a lot more future proof. Two gigabytes nowadays is just becoming really dated. So for the RAM, we chose to go with two sticks of four gigs. So we're working with eight gigabytes here. It's rated at 3000 megahertz. This is from Corsair, the very popular Vengeance LPX RAM. As far as Ryzen, it prefers higher clocked RAM in opposed to lower clocked RAM like 2666 or 2400. You could also go with RAM rated at that, but this one will just promote more stable FPS, a little bit higher FPS too. We're only going with a 128 gigabyte SSD in this build. And the reason for that is because, well, the budget. If our budget was larger, I would have gone with a hard drive. I still recommend you guys do pick up a hard drive if your budget allows for it. But if it d doesn't, you can always... What the... What the, what the, what the... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bro. Don't do that again, bro. <laughs> Don't do that again. <laughs> But yeah, guys, pick up a hard drive if your budget allows for it. Definitely pick up an SSD though. Don't get me wrong. Definitely want an SSD. The year's 2018. When you install the Windows 10 operating system onto an SSD and programs, everything runs so much smoother and quicker because SSDs are so much faster than hard drives. So our last part is, it's just a simple fan. It's gonna promote better airflow, guys. This case, I believe, comes with one fan, but two fans, it's always better. The, the, what? 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 <laughs> Two fans is always better than one fan. We went with a 500 watt bronze rated power supply by EVGA. We paid 35 bucks for it. Okay guys, most of my builds always, actually like pretty much all the builds guys, the cases always have windows. This case does not have a window. We paid $36 for this case. Since it is a more budget lower end case, that's why it doesn't have a window, but that's okay guys. I'm gonna be recommending another case that's not as high. But that's okay guys, I'm gonna be recommending another case that's just a little bit more money than this one and that's the Masterbox Lite 3.1. It goes for $40. But yeah, I still wanna spice things up a bit because just plain black, I don't know, it's kind of boring. So I just bought a bunch of sticker packs from Amazon as you can see right here. And then I went to the mall and I bought this and I bought these Disney stickers. And yeah, there's no window, but since I always go with a Funko Pop, just felt weird doing a PC build without one. So we went with a Funko Pop. We are just gonna be sticking them right there okay guys so we're gonna first be working with our motherboard and our cpu so just lay your motherboard down on a flat surface so to install our cpu into the socket if we look closely right here there's a top arrow so all you have to do is line up the arrow on the cpu with the arrow on the motherboard so the arrow for the motherboard if you guys can see it's on the top left so simply lift up the lever now when putting in the cpu we're not going to push it in because that may bend the pins and you don't want that that's going to damage our cpu so just go ahead and lay it on top and then wait till it falls in eventually it should just fall in just try there you go it just fell right in now just pull the lever back down and the cpu's in very easy now to cool our cpu we're going to be using the stock amd heatsink that the cpu comes with first though we're going to have to remove these four screws and take these things off all right, so once that's removed, just go ahead and line it up with the four points. And do not worry about over tightening the heatsink. It simply won't let you. It'll stop turning and that's how you know you've tightened it enough. So I like to do opposite ends. So do this end and then do the end across from it. Because if you don't do opposite ends, it's then gonna be like really hard to screw in the one right next to it because it's gonna lift up the heatsink too much. So our CPU fan needs power. We're gonna connect this to on the motherboard. So it should look just like that, guys where it's labeled CPU fan is where it hooks in. So moving into our RAM installation, also very simple. First thing you wanna do is just lift up both of the gray levers. So with this configuration, you're just gonna stick your stick down here first like that, and then push it down from here. And you should hear a click. This will lift back up just like that. And we're gonna do the same thing for the other stick. And there's our click. Okay, so our RAM's installed. Next, we're gonna be securing our motherboard into our actual case. 
I like it guys. It's simple, not over the top. So as far as the ports of this case, we have our power button. Then we have three USB ports, microphone, headphone jack, restart button. Motherboards are secured with motherboard standoffs. This motherboard has one, two, three, four, four, five, six, seven, eight points where it's gonna have to attach to the motherboard and then be screwed in. When you open your case, the necessary motherboard standoffs are not always in the appropriate position. So we may or may not have to rearrange them. So that's what we're gonna be looking at right now. They have this little thing where you could put the screws that's magnetic so you won't lose your... <laughs> I'm gonna be putting them in a safe place and that's gonna be on top of this guy. There you go. So we only needed to add two additional motherboard standoffs. So one was installed right here and then the second one was installed down here. All the other ones were in the appropriate positions. So for our motherboard, the micro ATX layout, pretty much it was just three up here, three across right here, and then final two, one right here, and then one down there. Once you have that all taken care of, you can now install your IO shield. Just push it in until you hear the clip. So that's lined up and that's lined up. Finally, we're able to screw in our motherboard. When building a PC, there's pretty much two sets of cables, your case cables, and then the second group of cables is all gonna be from the power supply. So now we're gonna be hooking up all our case cables to the motherboard. All right guys, so don't get intimidated by all the cables. Remember, we're just gonna take it one cable at a time. So first cable we're gonna be connecting, I'm gonna be wiring it down here, and it's gonna be the USB 3.0 cable, which hooks up right here. We're not gonna be hooking up our HD audio cable, which hooks up right here. It's labeled AAFP on our motherboard. So it should look just like that, guys. Moving on to our USB 2.0 cable, it's gonna hook up right next to the USB 3.0 cable. It should look just like that. So these are pins down here at the very bottom of the motherboard where my finger's pointing. So the first cable we're gonna be hooking up is the HDD LED, which is gonna be hooking up on the bottom left-hand side. The positives, which is the plus, are always on the left. So it should look just like that. So the power LED cables are gonna hook up right on top of the ones we just hooked up. Moving on to our reset switch, it's gonna go on the bottom right-hand side. And our last cable, the power switch, is gonna go right on top of it. So we're done hooking up those little cables. Now moving on to our power supply. So this is our power cable. We're gonna be installing it through the back of the case and make sure the fan is facing down. So just insert it in the back side. So the power supply comes with the screws you need to secure it into the case. Power supplies in. All right guys, so we have quite a few power cables here, but we're actually only gonna be using three of them. So we're gonna be hooking up this big 24 pin power cable, one of the SATA cables to power our SSD, and the CPU power cable to power the CPU. Before we hook up our power supply cables, I just wanna mention a quick thing. So yeah guys, when you pick out a graphics card, most of them require external power from the power supply, which will hook up right here. And that cable for this power supply would be labeled PCI Express. This is a 500 watt power supply. So in the future, if you wanted to upgrade to an RX 580 or a GTX 1060, you'd be able to do so with this power supply. Just simply power them with this cable right here. So we're not gonna be using this. Okay, let's hook up those three cables. So our 24 pin power cable has two parts. Make sure you connect it like this and it's gonna hook up right here. Now this clip has to connect back here. When pushing in our 24 pin power cable, I like to support the back of the motherboard with our fingers so we don't bend it too much. Okay, our 24 pin power cable is plugged in. So our CPU power cable is gonna be hooked up right here. This cable is gonna clip in on the left side of the case. Okay, CPU power cable out of the way, should look just like this. And now our final cable, the SATA cable, is gonna hook up to our SSD. So we got all our screws from our SSD bag. We're gonna wanna secure three of these onto it. So one right here. So we're only gonna be screwing in three mounts because the final one is already on the case. And then in the back of the case, I'm just gonna screw in the final one. All right, cool. So hook up the SATA power cable to the SSD. And now to connect the SSD to the motherboard, we're gonna be using a SATA cable. I know they're both called SATA. It's a little confusing. I guess you can call this the data SATA cable and that's the power SATA cable. It's gonna hook up like that. And then the other end is gonna hook in into one of these. So now our SSD is powered and it's hooked up to our motherboard. So now I'm just gonna be quickly installing one fan to the front of the case. It comes with the necessary screws. All right guys, so we have our one fan secured. Let's put the lid back on. Now we're removing the panel. Don't be afraid to give it a nice tug and when securing it, don't smack. Yeah, you're not gonna break it. Those panels are meant for that. So now to power the fan that came with the case and then the fan we just installed, we have to hook these up to our motherboard. So the fan on the back of our case hooks up right next to it actually right here, just like that. And then the final one's gonna hook up up here. Like that. All right guys, so now we're finally moving on to the last part, our graphics card installation. So to make room for our graphics card, we have to remove two of these expansion brackets. 
So our graphics card is going to be hooking up right here. So just line it up into place and then push it straight in and make sure you hear the click. I didn't really hear a click, but this thing will obviously push up in it. So yeah, make sure it's secured right here. And we're done. Cable management, really simple because this case makes it very easy. So luckily we have this big open space right here. So I'm just gonna simply push in all our cables in there. And that's it. You could of course take your time and put zip ties to make it more neat, but it's not really gonna affect the performance of the PC because there's no airflow really happening back here. All right guys, now time for the fun part. Uh, oh. We covered up most of the case. I'm just gonna be sticking this creepy looking it magnet onto it for our final touch. But wait, we're not done. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry, bro. Ta-da! It looks great, guys, I like it. I know it's real funky, but I like funky. I like it a lot. One more right here. Done! Yeah! Let's get a 360 view. So here, we have stickers here, we have stickers here, we have stickers here, we have stickers here. Oh my goodness, oh my god, so sorry bro. Okay guys, now we're gonna be moving on to the installation process of Windows 10, drivers, and games. And then finally, we're gonna be playing games. So now I'm gonna try to do the cool transition effect that they do, so I'm just gonna stand up still right here, and then I'm gonna jump, and then when I land, everything should be set up differently. One, two, three, jump. All right guys, so time to get everything installed now. As far as how I'm gonna be connecting to the internet, I'm gonna be going the ethernet route. If you wanted to use Wi-Fi, I'd recommend just picking up a USB Wi-Fi adapter. I'm gonna link this one in the video description. But yeah, pretty much right now, we first need to install an operating system. Windows 10 is what we're gonna be installing. This is a USB device with Windows 10 OS already ready to be booted up. And if you guys would like to know how to create your own Windows 10 USB, go ahead and check out the video in the description. I made a full guide on it. So since the drive is empty, it's gonna boot directly to the USB flash drive. So now let's go ahead and just turn it on. And yup, there it goes. And since we're gonna be installing it on an SSD, the installation process should be pretty quick. Go ahead and just select your language, install now. So right here is where you would insert a product key if you had one. They typically cost around $100 if you buy it directly from Microsoft. We don't have one, so I'm just gonna click, I don't have a product key. So then pretty much you're getting Windows 10 for free, basically, except with some drawbacks and the only drawback is that you're pretty much going to have a little watermark on the bottom right hand side of your screen telling you to activate windows but the pc is still going to function like a normal activated copy of windows so yeah what i just did right now is i went ahead and went to custom so as many drives that you hooked up to your motherboard they will all show up here since we only hooked up our ssd our ssd is only going to be displayed so yeah if we would have also hooked up a hard drive it would be right here but remember if you do have a hard drive still pick your ssd because that's where we want to install windows 10 because that's where it's going to boot up quick and whatnot. All right, so that's it. Now it's just gonna restart. Yup, there we are. Okay, so yeah, Windows 10 is pretty much already installed onto our SSD, so we could just go ahead and disconnect the USB flash drive. Now it's like if you just bought a new PC, so United States for me, US, skip. So I'm already connected to the internet, so it's automatically gonna look for any updates, Windows 10 updates and install them. Uh, set up for personal use next. Well, offline account is what I want. I don't wanna sign into my Microsoft. No, it's okay. So we've now booted up to our desktop from our SSD. Windows 10 is now installed. So the watermark would pop up here, guys. Right now it's not here. Sometimes it appears and sometimes it doesn't. But yep, that's pretty much the only con. Besides that, Windows 10 is free. If you don't want the watermark, then you'd have to activate it. Okay, so first thing I do is I open up Internet Explorer and I'm gonna download Chrome right away. It's just the browser I prefer. If it blacks out like that, it automatically sensed that it was a 1920 by 1080p monitor. So it blacks out and it automatically adjusts the resolution Sometimes it does that, sometimes it doesn't. If it doesn't do that, it'll definitely do it after you install our graphics card drivers. So yeah, I'm just gonna download Chrome real quick. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install our graphics card drivers. So just type in AMD RX 560. But I am gonna make it easier on you guys and I'm just gonna have the link to the drivers posted in the video description, just for convenience for you guys. Windows 10 64-bit edition, that's what we're running. And I'm just gonna download the latest version, which is this one up here, 1018, download. So once that's done downloading, I'm just gonna click right here and now Chrome automatically opens it up. Yes, just click install and it's now installing it. Okay guys, so accept and install. It's detecting our hardware. 
Install Radeon Relive is pretty much so you can record your gameplay. I'll just install it. Okay, keep system up to date. Yeah, sure. Restart now. Well, yeah, you have to restart it in order for the drivers to take effect. I'm gonna restart the computer once I'm done installing everything. So I'll just put close for now. So now we're gonna be downloading and installing our motherboard drivers. I'm also gonna post a link to where you download the drivers in the video description, but navigate over to support cpu drivers and tools so go ahead and select windows 10 64 bit right here and you don't necessarily have to install all the drivers i'm only going to be installing the LAN driver so download that one i'm downloading the audio driver and those are the only drivers i'm going to be downloading i'm going to go ahead and be showing you guys how to update the bios too as far as what that will do it pretty much may or may not improve system stability it's a pretty simple process we are going to need an additional empty usb flash drive to install the bios okay so now that all that's downloaded i'm going to see where it's at show them folder and it's in our downloads folder let's exit this out i'm gonna drag all of these that i just downloaded to our desktop for easier viewership and all these files they're all zipped so we have to unzip them so right click and then extract all extract it to our desktop and we're gonna do it for all three of them okay and once you extract them they're automatically gonna open i'm just gonna exit them out for now and then the last one extract all all right so that's our bios let's exit everything out okay so before i we install our bios let's just install our two drivers that we downloaded so just click the folder and you want to look for the asus setup or the setup i'll just click asus setup yes and yeah it's easy installing drivers just pretty much just click next 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 that's it uh reboot the system i'll do it later so i'm just gonna put cancel i want to finish installing the other driver first so now we're installing our land driver same thing I'll exit these out, don't need them anymore. Next, install, reverse so finish. All right, so we're gonna get an empty USB flash drive. I got one right here. Okay, it should pop up, Select, open it like that. All right, it's empty. So we're gonna go ahead and open up the BIOS folder that's not zipped and just drag over the file to the flash drive. Okay, so now our flash drive only has the BIOS file. So now we have to reboot the system into the BIOS. So to do that is we're gonna turn off our computer. You could just press it once and it was just shut down how it's supposed to. So right now when we reboot our computer, we're gonna have to press a key rapidly to boot to our BIOS. It's different on every motherboard. I believe for this one, it's delete. So I'm just gonna keep pressing delete. And it was delete. Okay, we're in our BIOS now. And this one's just straight up green. <laughs> BIOSes are weird, sometimes it does that. We're also gonna be making sure our RAM is running up to its full potential. We went with a kit rated at 3000 megahertz, so we wanna make sure it's running at 3000 megahertz. So right now we're gonna do that. We're gonna update our BIOS and make sure our RAM is running at 3000 megahertz. So we're gonna go over to advanced mode. Then I'm gonna go to tool. I'm gonna go to ASUS flash through utility. And we're gonna do it via storage device, our USB flash drive next and since we only have our flash drive hooked up it pops up right away you would select it here it's the eight gigabyte one and then i click it the file and i click yes i want to read that file and it will then proceed to install the bios now guys when you're updating the bios you want to make sure the power to the pc does not go off if it shuts off during this process it could render your motherboard useless and then you're gonna to have to ship it back to the manufacturer for repair so make sure you do not lose your power connection to this pc that's very important when updating the bios the pc cannot be turned off so yeah make sure your dog doesn't trip over it or your grandma doesn't trip over it but yeah if i were to just unplug this computer's done and you'd be able to repair it but it'd be a major hassle and yeah while the bios is updating remember guys you don't have to do this this is totally optional it may or may not improve system stability but you definitely do want to do what we're about to do right now after this which is make sure our ram is running at its rated speed because then you're kind of just throwing money away i'm pretty sure it's not going to be running at its rated speed too so i'll show you guys how to do that right now all right update successful system will be reset okay all right we booted up to this screen it just says press f1 to run setup so F1 and it booted not to Windows 10, but back to our BIOS, which is good. That's what we wanted anyways. Thank you, PC. It read my mind. Um, we don't need this flash drive anymore. I'm just gonna disconnect it. Now we wanna make sure our RAM is running at its rated speed. So we're gonna head over to advanced mode. So go to AI tweaker and then memory. It was definitely not running at 3000 megahertz. This is pretty easy. All you have to do is just go to the first one and click DLCP and exit. That's pretty much all you have to do. It's easy. Save changes and reset. Okay. And as you can see, it'll tell you all the changes it made. And right here under memory frequency, it changes to 3000 megahertz. All right, guys, so one of the most popular platforms to download games from is Steam, of course. So Steam, we're gonna download Steam, install Steam now. And then once it's done downloading, we're gonna open it up. I'm gonna go ahead and click it to install Steam. Yes, next, English. Uh, yes, I want it on my SSD right there. That's the only drive we have hooked up. And then run Steam, finish. So now, Blizzard. All right, so I'm gonna go to blizzard.com and I wanna look for the installation thing right here. Install the app and that's gonna be downloading. And if you wanna play Fortnite, you have to download another platform, which is the Epic Games platform. So I click Blizzard, I'm gonna install Blizzard. 
yes let's click epic and it's going to install epic and since this is the pc master race we can multitask guys look at this see this game right here robo recall i want to play that game so bad it looks so cool i've seen the gameplay it's a vr game all right so add a desktop shortcut sure continue so it's installing the blizzard application it's downloading updates for the epic application steam is also updating itself right now yes it's gonna ask permission while these things are installing themselves downloading install this feature yes we're gonna need this download and install this feature okay so log into an existing account for steam or create an account i'm just gonna log into my existing account okay so blizzard is done installing epic games is done installing so yeah guys if you guys are new go ahead and just make your account and then you'll be able to install the games you want to play so i'm gonna go ahead and log into both of these right now this is already done installing so i'll just click close so when you open up steam this is how steam would look so think of this as your dashboard on your xbox one or i don't know what they call it on playstation i'm just gonna call it the menu i think that's what they call it so right here if you go to library and you go to games it'll tell you all the games you have right and i'm gonna go ahead and install a game to show you guys how it would look so csgo we're gonna click install and it's gonna tell you how big the game is too so i'm just gonna click next it's gonna be pretty quick it's a smaller game this game is 7.5 five gigs and i'm going to go to install rainbow six siege what I'm gonna be installing a hard drive in this PC for the games. So yeah, if you're gonna be installing a lot of games, you're gonna need a hard drive. If you're just gonna be playing like Fortnite or small games like CSGO and Overwatch is not that big either, then you're good with this SSD for now till you wanna install bigger games. All right, guys, so I just installed the hard drive, which is good. I'll be able to show you guys now how to configure it. But yep, the SSD is just not enough space. I'm gonna be testing out a lot of games for you guys. Okay, so this is how you configure the hard drive if you choose to go with one. All right, so let's turn on the computer. So I'll show you guys how to install Fortnite onto the hard drive. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is go ahead and search the computer for disk. And it should pop up, create and format hard disk partitions. Then right away, it's gonna notice that we have a new hard drive hooked up. I'm gonna select GPT. Okay, so now go ahead and just click the hard drive area and right click. We're gonna pick new simple volume. We have to assign a drive letter to our hard drive to be able to navigate to it. So click next, next, and I'm gonna select G for games pretty much. Next, as far as what we're gonna title it, I installed the one terabyte hard drive, so I'll just call it that. One terabyte HDD. Uh, perform a quick format, yeah, that's fine because it's a brand new hard drive. Next, finish, and that's it. That's already configured, it'll pop up right away. So yeah, I'm at this PC and our hard drive's here. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a folder and title it Epic, cause that's where I'm gonna install Fortnite. So now we're gonna open up Epic Games, sign in to your account. Okay, so we're signed into our Epic account. Now remember how we installed CSGO on Steam? We installed it to our SSD. If you wanted to install CSGO on the hard drive, you're gonna pretty much do in Steam what we're about to do in Epic Games. So I'm gonna go ahead and click play now, install. Every time when you're installing a game, the computer tells you where you want to install it to. So right here, it's gonna install it to our SSD, but we wanna install it to our hard drive, right? So you're just gonna change it by clicking browse. Go to this PC, go to your one terabyte hard drive, and I'm just gonna select the Epic folder. Right here, you would create like a Steam folder and then create a Blizzard folder to then install your games into different categories. Keep them organized in your hard drive. So yeah, Epic Games, select folder, install. So it's gonna now install Fortnite onto our hard drive. So yeah, guys, if you're gonna be installing a lot of games, you're definitely gonna need additional storage. So I wanna test out a lot of games for you guys, which is why I just threw a hard drive in there. So yep, it's installing Fortnite, it's at 23%. So yeah, once all the games are done downloading, we'll start playing, but I just wanna mention one quick thing if you haven't already turned on the bell notifications for the channel go ahead and do so so you can be alerted for when i post future pc builds i have a lot of future videos planned i'm excited for them all right guys so it's time for some csgo we're gonna be playing the game at these settings right here engage a chicken oh look a softball no oh my god help me see me Yay! Okay guys, so we're gonna play a ranked match of Rainbow Six Siege. Check. Oh. Is that the real Joey Delgado? Oh, I got recognized. Let's see. Maybe he'll let us win. Let us win. All right. They're gonna throw the match now. Just kidding. They're gonna blast me as soon as they see me. 
So yeah, guys, I'm very pleased with the performance. For an RX 560, I have it on the medium settings preset is what we're running the game at. And we're above 60 FPS, way above 60. It never goes below 60. And I'm really pleased with that. It's super smooth too. All right, guys, we're playing Black Ops 3 now. I'll show you guys the settings. For details and textures, this is what I picked. Shadows and lighting and post-processing effects. If I went to fast, just go ahead and pause it, guys. So for this game mode, I just got to grab the cash and then book it. That guy's down. You can also revive your teammates, so that's pretty cool. All right, I got one guy. Ammo, ammo, ammo. Yes, yes. Okay. Yup, I got ammo. <sighs> well, at least I tried. Finish him. Reminds me of Gears of War, the way these guys crawl, because they look pretty big. All right, picked up ammo. Wait, this guy's alive? What the? What a warrior. I thought I took him out. How do I get health? Oh, you got to get it on the map, huh? Let me just get the health. All right, got health. Oh, I got to press X to use it. Okay, 2v1, here we go. No! Reload! Yay! We won! Victory dance. No, okay. I'm just gonna get the cash and dip. Hope you guys don't mind. What? Get over here, let me punch you in the face. Get out of here. Oh, I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna make it. Oh, these guys fell asleep. All right, we're winning two more. Well, I got this gun. This gun looks pretty awesome. Let's see what it can do. Jeez. No, get him. <laughs> I'm guessing this is the most powerful sniper in the game. Maybe it's a one shot, one kill. I'm pleased with the performance so far, though. The game seems pretty smooth. Where are you? You good, bro? Where is he? Dude, I didn't even pull the trigger. Oh, no. Rip me. Yeah, guys, what I was saying, if you're not... Wait, what? We won that? Oh, we won. Yay. All right, let's show them who's boss. Or not. <laughs> oh, God. Here comes a flank. Oh, my. By the way, guys, we're playing Overwatch in the medium settings graphic preset. Oh, you guys are done now. As soon as I um get a good position. Hold up, guys. Hold up. I'll... I'll I'll eliminate you guys right now. You guys gotta be patient, alright? Wish me luck. Alright guys, time to stop trolling the What the What is I So we're playing PUBG on these settings. Anyways, this is not an explosion. Since there's no one else around. Went down to 45. There he is. Alright, that's one guy. All or nothing. Go, 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 go. Is that his head? Is this his head? That's not his head. I'm paranoid. Oh, see someone. Oh, is that an enemy? That was my head. <laughs> when you put on the medium preset, it drops this down, but I'm still running it at 100. Guys, guys. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, what the? So yeah, guys, I'm really pleased with the performance we're getting for Fortnite. It's above 60. That's cool. That's what I was looking for. But anyways, guys, if you guys want to see future PC build guides, be sure to turn on post notifications. Thanks for watching to the end. Peace.